Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. A while ago I did a video on making this Rubo style book stand that folds up and it's kind of nice. It's a very historical way for books, but I don't read a lot of hardback books. I read a lot of audiobooks. I probably go through about one a week. So for that I wanted to make a Rubo style audiobook holder and this one even has a wireless charging port in it so I can set the phone in it and just listen away. So this is a lot of fun with some interesting things I've been wanting to do for a while. Now I'm guessing you probably have seen the video where I just kind of go through it and have fun and the music's playing and that's a good thing and a lot of YouTubers like that. But this one I'm really going to go into more detail what I'm thinking, why I did it, the way I did it, and just kind of go through the whole thing step by step. If you want to see more or you just lay back, I'll leave a link to that down below and up in the cards. But for right now we're going to dive into exactly how we made this and what in the world I was thinking. A lot of this is going to be very familiar to when I made this book stand. Um, I like it, the book stand is nice, but I need something a little different. So I'm going to grab the exact same scrap of box elder, which is actually a soft maple, and I'm going to use that to continue it on. So the cut I made before, let's continue that on down the board and pull the next piece out of this. I'm going to make it so that it is the same width as the length of my phone. Uh, that way when my phone sits sideways, it supports the whole thing. And then I'm going to cut down a little bit more than two widths of my phone down the board. So I can set a mark on there. Nothing particular, just uh, it needs to be about that long. And then I can rip it down, or excuse me, cut it down to that length. Now I have this block of wood that we can start working with. And this is the part that is always snow. <laughs> but we need to flatten this thing out. Thankfully, with one small piece, this box elder worked pretty quickly. So I can use a scrub plane, remove most of the material, get it down flat, check it with a straight edge, check it with winding sticks, and bring it into true. If you want to see more information about this, I have several videos on dimensioning lumber, where I go into it in detail on small pieces, large pieces, and several other ways. So you can uh, see those as well. Once I know that one side is flat, then we can then smooth it out. And so I can do that with a smaller plane, with a finer setting, get a nice glossy smooth surface, and all the world is now happy. Now we have one reference face that we can take everything else off of. The next thing I want to do is have a reference edge, so that I know it's 90 degrees and true to the, the side that I just flattened out. And so we can use squares and check it and bring it into exactly 90 degrees to the face that we just made. Now we have a reference face and a reference side that we can work off of. And I want to true up both of the ends and bring those into 90 degrees with the face and the side. Uh, here I'm putting on some paste wax, some homemade paste wax onto the plane. It makes it slide a lot easier and uh, holy cow, it was really loud on this end grain. Uh, so a little bit of paste wax on the bottom of the sole is amazing what it can do. Once we bring those into square and everything is happy on both ends, then we can cut the board to, well, in this case it's width. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to mark that out to be a slightly wider than the phone is long using the uh, panel gauge to go all the way around it. Once I rip that down, then we're close to the line, and I just want to plane that back to the line. And theoretically, once I hit this line, it should be perfectly square uh, to both faces. Or excuse me, to the one face we already did, and then, of course, to both ends of the board. So clean it up, and then hit with the smoothing plane, bring it into nice and shiny, and then we can move on to the other face, the, the back side of the board. Uh, for this, I'm actually going to use a marking gauge and measure off of the face so that I know that the board is going to be the same thickness all the way around. I mark all the way around the perimeter of the board, and then it's just a matter of planing it down to that line. This is one chance I got to pull out my uh, five and a quarter. I uh, don't get to use that plane very often, but uh, it is a fun one to use. The, uh, the five and a quarter plane. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't need a five and a quarter plane. It just happened to have one, and I, I like to use it since I have it. The easiest way to sharpen a pencil, with a chisel, of course. Now, this is the, uh, the, the wireless charger that I got, and I bought one offline and ripped it apart and pulled the guts out of it so that I could put it into here, because uh, fitting in the whole thing just wasn't going to work very well. And I'll try and leave a link to the one I have down below, as long as it's still available. Then once I've traced out exactly where I want to put it, I need to mark it out. And I'm going to take this down to depth. Um, so I'm going to leave it about an eighth inch away from the, the center of the board. So when I cut this down the middle, I'm not going to hit the, uh, the, the gap that I'm opening up now. I want there to be about an eighth inch of material between the charger and the phone. So I can use a gouge to run around the outside 
and then come in with a chisel, bevel down, and it allows me to remove all the waste pretty quickly. It's actually kind of a fun task, especially with this box elevator. It chips out of there really nicely. A lot of fun. Curls flying. <laughs> then we can bring in the, uh, the router plane, and this is everyone's favorite tool because it's the one that you're playing with at the moment. Um, but uh, this allows you to bring everything down into perfectly smooth and flat on the bottom. That way you can make sure that nothing is going to be sticking down past where you're going to be cutting in the future. I just need to do the exact same thing again with removing the waste for where the electronics are. Chop it out, pare it out, and then clean it out with a router. And then we are basically ready to make sure that the electronics fit and uh, ready to move on to the next step. Yay, everything fits in, we're happy. <laughs> so now we're going to work on the foot of this. Uh, we want to do a little bit of decoration on here and I was kind of playing with something a little bit different. I was thinking about doing some carving and uh, I'm really not as happy with the design that I have on this one as well, but hey, it was worth a try, something different to experiment with and, and play with something a little different. Um, I wish I had, rather than keeping these square edges that I put on there, just kept it round. Uh, I think that would have done a little differently, but oh well. Uh, next thing we want to do is actually lay out the hinges and we're going to put uh, five pieces across here so there are four dots in between. Use a uh, uh, divider to walk that off and then we can cut in a hole through the top. Just get a small 16th inch bit and then start picking it out. If you want more detail on this whole process, I'm kind of going to go through it quickly because I covered it fairly detailed um, in the last video where I made one of these. I'll try and leave a link to that down below. Basically, you're just going to pick out the hole until I can get a keyhole saw in there and then cut down. Now that I have these slots in between where the knuckles of the hinges will be, we actually need to start chopping out where the hinges will be. And so it's chop down along the line and then pair out at 45 degrees, chop down, pair out, chop down, pair out, until you get a nice line from the center of the knuckle down to the center of the board. I want it to reach just shy of center because when we cut it, the, uh, the saw will actually take it all the way. Flip it over, do the other side, and voila! Now we've cut the knuckles in. The next step is actually resawing this down. So I want to use a marking gauge to lay out a center line all the way around to the perimeter of the board. And this will be the line that I'm going to cut down the middle. And rather than staying on one side of the line or the other, I'm actually going to try and keep the line um, smack in the middle of the curve. So I'm going to start with the foot and run down it. Because this one's so small, I can actually use the tenon saw as my resawing saw and it makes it a lot easier. This saw leaves a really nice clean cut. See, I start on the side away from me, and then I work the heel down until it's all the way across on that line, drop it down to the board, and go to town. On the, the saw as well, you can put a little bit of paste wax, and you'll be amazed at how fast it moves through, especially if, this, if the board is binding on you a little bit. Oh look, I'm wearing wooden shoes. Yes, I love wooden shoes. They're protective, they're incredibly comfortable, and they are fun to use. Here you can see how I'm not hitting where I've chopped out. I want to just leave a little bit in there. Now this was, it didn't pop open with the saw, so I need to remove a little bit more material with the chisel. And uh, popping down from one side, popping down from the other, working it back and forth until it just goes pop. There we go. And if, if, it's, if it's not coming, don't force it. Um, forcing it is a problem, and you'll probably end up breaking it. I'm just going to go in and clean out a little bit more and make sure that it opens up all the way. Any place where it's hitting, I can work on it a little bit until it is right there where I want it. Now we want to take off one of these tongues, and this will be the front where the foam will rest up against. Um, so I can mark that off, cut it down, and then this piece I cut off, I'm actually going to use it to create a little bit of veneer to cover the back. I don't want the ex electronics exposed, I want to actually cover them up. So I'm going to, ooh, excuse me, I'm going to cut down this at about, uh, I think it was about eighth inch thick or so, and then slice it down, basically like resawing, but it's a smaller piece so it comes off pretty easily. And as long as you take your time, you'll leave it with a really nice smooth, a smooth surface. I don't care about the outside of it being smooth because I'm going to be planing that side down. I just need one side smooth so I can glue it down to the surface. Before we put it in there, we need to glue in our electronics. I'm going to do that with just some hot glue, make sure that everything um, is locked in place and uh, not, uh, not moving around. I want to make sure there's enough space for the, the cable so that it can come unplugged. And then clamp it all down. These little squeeze clamps actually do really quick work here so that it can uh, um, well, hold it in place. <laughs> Let it sit for about a half hour or so, 
and then we can come back and start planing this top off. I just uh, beveled the back all the way down to flush. And this way, if you look at it from the top, you can't actually tell that there's anything added on there. It just looks like it was shaped that way. And it goes pretty quickly to smooth it down. On uh, the tongue sticking out of the front, I'm going to cut off these little pieces because they'll probably break off sometime in the future. So I just cut them at 45 and then I can come in with a chisel and chamfer everything down. And I love these little ingrain curls. It's so much fun and so beautiful. Um, anytime you get to uh, work with a really sharp chisel and use it like a plane, um, yeah, that's, that, that's where hand tools really shine and, and it's really enjoyable. So I'm going to be going all the way around this. I put uh, corner chamfers on the top piece just to kind of match the, the front a little bit. And then we can scrape everything down and start adding the chamfers to all the corners. Use the card scraper to clean everything up. Um, any of the marks and lines where I can hit with a plane, I'm going to try and get into those. But for most cases, it's easier just to take the card scraper and scrape it down to smooth. For the knuckles in between, uh, I didn't want to use the plane this time. I figured it would actually be a little easier to use the chisel. So I let the chisel slide in there until I had a nice flat surface. But right where the phone sits, I want to create a, a small gouge, a small groove that the phone can actually rest in. Uh, otherwise, it will want to slide forward because the knuckle is a little bigger than the, the phone. So I just took a gouge out and ran it down the surface until I got a nice smooth little gouge there for the, the phone to actually rest in. And that was, as well, very fun. Anytime you get to do a little carving, it is incredibly enjoyable. Back on to the chamfering, um, just using the chisel and having a little bit of fun with it. Anytime you come to these corners, it's just a little bit of creative work to get in there, um, riding the bevel around the corner or coming at it from two different directions. It uh, looks like I, I should be spending a lot of time with a, a block plane, but the chisel is, is actually faster than the block plane and I can be more accurate with how I'm doing it because I get to see it as it's cutting. Not to mention, it's just a lot more fun. Anytime you can use a chisel over a plane, it's, it's very fun. Final bit of smoothing all the way around, and then I think we're about ready for finish. Uh, for the finish, I'm going to be using boiled linseed oil. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> uh, it's just an easy finish to put on. Slap on the boiled linseed oil, let the, let the wood absorb as much as it wants, put some more on there until it stops absorbing it. And then after it has uh, sat on there for 15 minutes or so, uh, wipe it off and then immediately apply paste wax to it. And it's done. Set it up, make sure that it charges and you can see, ooh, look, the phone's charging. <laughs> um, it holds it both vertically and horizontally and I am really happy with how this came out. I'm looking forward to using it in the shop and listening to all my audiobooks. Ooh, yeah, happiness. So there you have it, a uh, Rubo style audiobook holder. <laughs> I really like this thing and I'm looking forward to using it quite a bit here in the shop. Um, I, I don't have a whole lot of use for the actual um, book holder, but this one I will use quite a bit. And I like having the wireless charging so I set the phone in it and go. Um, I hope you like this. I'd love to hear your thoughts or ideas. What would you do differently? Uh, particularly with putting the back on here to cover things up. I went through a bunch of different ideas of how I want to do that and this is the one I came up with. So, so let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear that. So usually at this point in the video, most people are thinking, oh, it's an audiobook, so it must be sponsored by Audible. Well, no, um, I actually, I don't have any sponsorships on any of my channels. Um, I do that because I, I, I just don't like it as much. There's something about it that feels a little bit uh, tinny to me. I'd rather have everything I say be what I want to say rather than the script that someone gives me to say. So I don't do any of that. If you'd like to help out the channel, I am I'm completely sufficient on what you guys help me with, whether it be Patreon or becoming a member down here on YouTube, hitting the join button down down below. Um, thank you for that. I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons, to members. Um, you're helping make you, you're helping make Wood by Right better. So I think that'll about do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. I wonder if I can get Andre Rubo's book on audio. Hmm.